I think that the fact that Charlie like is often credit where credits due, pretty quick at his fate in debates. Uh, like you, like I've 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 watched a couple of them at this point. Uh, the the Kalinsky one we watched a little bit of earlier. I watched the whole thing. I watched the whole Sam Cedar one that he did, uh, and he's not often stumped. But in that case. The thing about undemocratic workplaces, he just blatantly doesn't answer the question. And I think well, that's, a- that's the that's the that's the that's the trick. Don't answer the question. Never answer the question. Just say what you want to say. And they play to the question. Now. You'll never lose that way. You never get your points docked by the te- the imaginary teacher. Well, well I was, I was, I was, I was going to say, like, I think there's a reason that he wasn't answering this particular question because all of his pre-prepared talking points about capitalism are about. Uh, capitalism like leads to all of this economic growth, you know, that there's like much more to go around, which as you say, Mark said that too. Uh, and capitalism, you know, markets, since capitalism includes markets and markets like are very bad at lots of things, but they're very good at like coordinating consumer preferences with production. Uh, and that's all yeah. true. But the, the thing is, I mean, this is like the essential like libertarian and conservative blind spot like labor markets are not like other kinds no. of markets that no. if, if, if you have to sell, like if you have to, uh, if you have to sell like a, a precious family heirloom with great sentimental value to make ends meet, that's very sad. If you have to sell your car to make ends meet, then that could like make your life a lot more inconvenient and you don't get to go to places you can't walk or take the bus. But those market transactions are just a different kind of thing than having to sell eight out of every 16 hours you're awake to a private dictator. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I mean, not, it's it's not just that, but you also can't move around, you know, as much. I mean, you can move around a little bit, but you can't move around uh, as, as efficiently or as quickly or as to, to as far away places as, as capital can. So like, if you you're, if you're more or less stuck to your, you know, let's say maybe you can move from a, to a different city within your own country. You know, at most, you know, it's very unlikely that you'd be able to move to a different country. But the other the other guys they can move around. They can move around. Therefore, a bunch of people get left behind um, in in labor markets. Um, it is not an is not an efficient kind of uh, system the way it is like you said to to uh, coordinate consumer preferences for like. You know, fucking sneakers or whatever. Let's, let's um, be honest about these discussions. They're never going to get into the weeds. And that's why I don't really, you know, Ben knows how I feel about this. I don't really like watch a lot of this shit because no one's ever going to get into the weeds in these discussions. You're playing to the crowd. Charlie yeah. Kirk plays to the crowd. What do you want to hear? You want to hear capitalism good and me yell at a dude with a Shea shirt? Eh. <laughs> Well, the, the most clever ones amongst them, um, you know, of which are probably Tucker Carlson is the cleverest. Um, but in a way, Trump did this, too, in the first campaign, is that they realize that most people find uh, libs annoying. Uh, and what they do is they take left wing critiques of libs um, and use the critique and you like literally use the same exact critique that, that the left will have of like the center or the liberals or whatever, you know. Um, and, but then just, but then just never grapple with any of the actual, um, material effects or the, not, not the material effects, but the material questions, um, beyond a sort of, uh, entry point critique, which, you know, we often would make the same one, like we would make the same ones of, of liberals or Democrats or whatever. No, you know, I, think- do, I do think that the Democrat, the Democratic Party is not helping black people like i agree <laughs> you know like uh or anyone really you know uh but uh you know, yeah yeah no, absolutely like I, I think especially lately like because a certain kind of right-wing pseudo populist um has and and i do want to like i know that's the vaguest word of the world populist but i still i still don't i still want to say like pseudo populist because i think it's just a very simple point but it's always worth reiterating right all of these fuckers say that they want to help ordinary people, you know, and not elites, but like all of them are, you know, it's like, Oh, we really care about these like ordinary people in the heartland, you know, the deplorables, whatever. It's like, no, you don't, you don't want to give them health. No. You don't want to raise their wages. You don't want to make it easier for them to have unions. You know, you don't want to, uh, you know, you don't want to do any of that. You know, you don't want to pay for their kids college. Um, but some of these guys have lately, I mean, this goes to your point. I mean, like they've done this pivot, to like they'll actually use the word capital now because they'll yeah. say 
uh, woke capital. Woke capital. Woke capital, baby. Woke capital is the new thing. Um, and then, do, do you remember? Do you remember this guy, Oren Cass, and like Marco Rubio also kind of talked about like their new, like the right wing labor union thing? Do you guys? Did you guys see this? Right wing. They made like the conservative. They made the conservative case for unions. <laughs> it was hilarious um, because they were like labor union. We hate the we 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 understand that that you know workers need unions to uh, kind of collective feel part of like a community and whatever and you know, they use those kind of reactionary terms yeah and then they were like the problem is that the, the the labor unions now are all uh you know they're all just kind of democratic party uh you know chills uh so we need like the conservative version of of unions and to watch them then try to like tie themselves in knots as to like how that would actually work in the real world and how they would actually like, implement that is fucking hilarious. Like you, Ben, you. This would be a very good GTAA show. Is to just watch uh, Oren Cass on uh, Sager, Sager and Jetty's podcast, trying to describe the conservative case of union, and then just kind of completely undermine himself um, uh, in the process. It's, it's well, well, it's I mean, I, I, Sager is is an interesting case because I think he's tried harder for longer than most of these guys to to make sense of the idea of some kind of right wing economic populism. But he can't do it. Like if you if you read like a really good thing to read is Sager's review of Thomas Frank's book, uh, The People Know, in History of Anti-Populism, uh, because of course Frank is talking about what the original populists stood for, the the economic policies, and how the word has become meaningless, and it's applied to people based on no content whatsoever, uh, and and you know how like the Trump brand of populism is is ridiculous. It's actually a really good book. Frank also talks about. Like Frank also has some like really sharp critiques of like sort of woke progressive, you know, cancel culture bullshit, you know, that like he uh, he's got this great like thing section in there about Lena Dunham, like try to get some airport worker fired. And he says that that's what liberalism is now. It's a finger wagging and, you know, the face of some prole forever. Uh, but um, uh, but in Sagner's review of it, like he obviously can't accept what Frank is saying that like right wing populism is a grift that there's no such thing, uh, so he ends up basically saying yeah 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 okay all economics fine but like what about culture you know that like it's it's a it's culturally populist to you know to try to like oppose the imposition of liberal values on people or whatever so it's like yeah ultimately on anything that's actually going to put a dollar in anybody's pocket. Sager sort of has to admit in that review, it's like, yeah, no, everything I've been saying for the longest time is just kind of nonsense. Uh, it's but like, don't worry, right? Uh, you get, you can, you know, even if you know you might not be able to afford that insulin, but you know, but we'll, we'll sure get you some like cultural affirmation. <laughs> All right, Kale. Uh, let's let's do the last clip. If the Soviet example was so great. Why were people fleeing the Soviet Union for Western democracies and they weren't fleeing Western democracies for the Soviet Union? Yeah, I don't defend the, the generation of the Soviet Union. As I explained before, uh, the, the Lenin and Trotsky, they pointed out that the revolution was international, but it was contained within a single nation. It wasn't contained. You tried it in Afghanistan. You tried it in Ukraine. You tried it in Lithuania. You tried it in Latvia. You tried it in Zimbabwe. You tried it in Cuba. You tried it in Central America. You tried it all throughout the. What are you talking about? You tried it on the Korean Peninsula. You tried it in Kyrgyzstan. You tried it in Pakistan. You tried it in China. You tried it in Vietnam. You tried it in Laos. You tried it in Cambodia. You tried it in Indochina. What do you mean contained? I couldn't hear what the so other guy was saying. Yeah, so, so that basically the the student he's he's talking to um, is a uh, he's like you know he he looks um, you know he's got that sort of like you know socialist guy with a beard you know mm -hmm. like he you know he looks like me right so he uh, there's there's the kid there who looks like the younger Ben Burgess and he's. Uh, and this, and the kid is clearly like a some sort of like student Trotskyist, and and he's trying to like bring up, uh, like no no no, uh, I'm not going to defend the Soviet model because of like Trotsky's thing about you know world revolution versus socialism in one country, and Charlie goes in to do this this sort of you know, again you can speculate about um about what uh, what substances might be going on there, but Charlie goes into this very fast, very intense. Uh, listed off of all of the countries 
uh, like Pakistan for some, which really confused yeah. me. Well, if we're talking about wealth creation, uh, if we're talking about wealth creation as a metric, uh, as Charlie is saying, the Soviet Union in 1916 was one of the poorest countries in Aquarians. certainly in Europe. It was a totally destroyed World War One. Uh, you know, it was a total like it was a joke in in World War One, like how how poorly it performed because it was its system was so rickety and um, and and it was just like a very backward uh, country. Uh, the Bolsheviks take power in 1917. Uh, by 1945. Uh, after World War II, uh, Soviet Union is the second most powerful country in the world after the United States. Uh, China, the, the 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 biggest example of like lifting people out of poverty in probably human history is the Chinese Communist Party, uh, starting in around 1980 to now, like hundreds of millions of people uh, lifted out of poverty. Let me, let me actually ask you both this question: What yeah. do you say when the Charlie Kirks of the world come back at you and say, "Well, China's basically a, a, a capitalist country"? Yeah, I mean, so that, that's what they always do, right? Like, in fact, they love that last example because they say, oh, see, China has been able to do all this, but only because they're, you know, they're, they're so capitalist now that they, uh, that like back in, you know, the battle days with Mao, you know, they couldn't have, but now they have, and that's all the glory of capitalism. And of course, they're not capitalist enough, but, you know, it's just because they're, even this much capitalism is enough to bring about all these wonderful results. And if there were more capitalists, it'd be better. And I would just point out, that um, look, China is certainly not a model I would defend. I think it has a, uh, it's it's obviously has all the sort of bad political authoritarianism of the old Soviet model, but it's also like you know, incredibly inegalitarian economically. You know that there there are there's a billionaire class in China. There are lots of people living in poverty in China. Uh, so it's it's got obviously. Uh, obviously, there are lots and lots and lots of things about the Chinese model to criticize, but the idea that Chinese growth is all because of capitalism is just ridiculous. The the Chinese state has a way bigger role yeah. in economic planning than it does in any normal capitalist country. And if you're saying that it it does that it's had all this growth despite that, that this is a success story for pure capitalism, not this sort of weird, unsatisfied authoritarian market socialism, then like. Where are the other capitalist countries that have been able to do anything like what China did as, as quickly or as effectively as they did? But the Charlie nothing Kirk's happens. Model. Sorry, I'm sorry. No, no. no go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, was, I lived. I know. I, I lived in China, and nothing fucking happens in China without the party uh, blessing it. You know, in any business, like any, you know, if J.P. Morgan wants to do a big fucking deal in China. Like they need the the blessing uh, uh, of the party. Like it is not a. Um, the, it's not like a market fundamentalist society. It does, you know, there's very strict capital controls, uh, from abroad. Like it's just not, it's in any way, like it does not behave at all. Like say the United States does. But, but we're talking about a person that has, has kind of mastered how to speak in, in Twitter speak, as I call it. All you mm. need is 124 characters to, to get your point across yeah. and that's it. We're going to spend chapter and verse having a conversation about the economic structure of China versus the economic structure structures of, of Soviet Russia, the failures of Soviet Russia, the outside forces that caused the Soviet Union to collapse. It's going to be a very long conversation. I, yeah. I have spent a lot of time putting these uh, documentary style <laughs> intros together where I have to watch hours sometimes of like William Buckley conversations. Yeah. And one thing yeah. I'll say about William Buckley conversations is they do go a little more in depth than just sound yeah. bites. Well, a quick point about that. I know Dado has to go, but the uh, 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 firing line could only have existed on PBS. You couldn't get that on Pop <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's uh, very good. That's a good point. But, but, but I think, like, on – okay, first of all, I can't not point this out every time I see this, that – uh, Charlie is doing the usual lazy conservative thing where they're listing off all of the bad, you know, communist countries. And he does the Soviet Union in Vietnam. And then he also throws in Cambodia because he was like, oh, Pol Pot, the killing fields. Without mentioning that, uh, that, that communist Vietnam actually invaded Cambodia to try to stop Pol Pot and the CIA backed Pol Pot uh, against, yeah, yeah, uh, you yeah. know, as an anti Soviet thing. So that one's on our ledger, not the Soviet ledger, as far as if we're going to compare atrocities. Uh, but, um, but yeah, I think China. 
like it's bad because of the thing that that guy the Shea shirt was correctly pointed out the workplaces are dictatorships private dictatorships you know I, I want democracy in the workplace also in larger society but yeah I think China shows that you can have state ownership of the commanding heights of the economy uh, and and you know probably you do need some market mechanisms etc that all works way better than uh, than yeah. more laissez-faire capitalism. And so it's like, yeah, just do that plus market plus workplace democracy. So there you go. Um.